The objective of this video is to allow the user to easily save each sheet in a workbook as separate Excel files. This way the user could go to a specific sheet, push a button, and save this entire sheet as a whole new Excel file which they could then send to somebody. So the primary objective is to save each sheet as a separate file. But to make things a bit more interesting, let's prompt the user for a save location. This way the save location can be different each time the user runs the macro. We also want to name each file based on the sheet's name. And finally, give the user the option to either save every sheet in the workbook or only save selected sheets. This way they could save certain sheets while not saving others. One of the things I'll be doing in this video but not explaining in great detail is the saving of the VBA code into the personal macro workbook. Now I've already created a video extensively detailing the creation and use of the personal macro workbook. So if you're a little fuzzy on those details, check out this particular video, link in the video description. Also, I'm going to be launching the macro using a very basic method within Excel. But there are many other ways to launch macros, one of which is to add a macro launch button to the quick access toolbar. If you're not familiar with adding macros to the QAT, check out this video, link in the video description, that will give you all the detail for customizing your quick access toolbar. There are many ways to launch macros, but this one might be the easiest one for now if you're not familiar with all the methods. So check those videos out. Let's begin by examining the VBA code. Now you don't have to understand any of this to get this to work. You can just copy paste this into Excel and everything is fully baked. But here is the code that we'll be executing. Now I know it looks like a lot, but probably half of this is just comments. I'll show you two ways to get this code into Excel. One is just by copy pasting it into the personal macro workbook. And the other is by importing a pre-created BAS file that I have in the file downloads. So check out the link in the video description for the file download where you can get this code as an importable file or as a text file that you can just copy paste. Let's get this code into Excel just to see it's working properly. But then if you're so inclined at the end of the video, I'll go through and break down each piece of this code so you fully understand what's going on. So let's get to it. To begin with, we need to open up the Visual Basic Editor. If you have the developer ribbon visible in Excel, you can go to it and in the upper left corner, click Visual Basic. You can also press Alt F11 to open up the Visual Basic Editor if you don't have the developer ribbon open. So I'll give this button a click, and here we are in the Visual Basic Editor. In the upper left hand corner, you should see a list of all open Excel files. Now here's the test file that we're going to be using, but here's the personal macro workbook. The best place to put this code will be in the personal macro workbook, that way you can use the code universally across all of your Excel files. If you don't have this personal macro workbook, check out that link in the video description on the personal macro workbook video where I show you how to create this. If you want to use the exported version of the code to just import it into the personal macro workbook, then place your mouse where it says personal.xlsb, right click, import file, and then browse out to the sheets to files.bas file. We'll give that a click, hit open, and now if you expand the modules folder, you'll see this entry for sheets to files. Double clicking on that will reveal all of the code. Another way we could have done that is by right clicking anywhere in the personal.xlsb area and say insert module. Now this would have inserted an empty module sheet, but then you could switch over to the text file, select all of the text, control C for copy, switch back to the Visual Basic Editor, and in this new module, paste that code. So either way works, it just depends on what you prefer. Now I don't need two of these, so I'm gonna remove that generic module sheet. Here I have a macro called Save Worksheets to Workbooks. Anything in here that's green is a comment, so I've tried to put as much documentation in here as possible, so if you're not familiar with the coding, you could at least read the comments and understand what's happening. Now we'll save the dissection of the code for the end of the video, but let's switch back to Excel. One way to launch the macro is to go up to the developer ribbon and go to macros. And here we see the save worksheets to workbooks macro. If you don't have the developer ribbon, you can also go up to view and in the upper right hand corner, click macros, view macros. This will open up the same dialog box. With that macro selected, we'll choose run. And the first thing that happens is we're prompted for a save location. If there's no defined start point for this operation in the code, it should default to your My Documents folder. But if you're constantly saving your exported sheets to a different location, I do have a line of code that will allow you to define that as the default start point. So I'm gonna navigate over to the C drive, go to my little ideas folder, save folder, and this is where I want to save those files. I'll hit okay. 
And now I'm prompted to decide whether or not I wish to save only selected sheets or all sheets in the workbook. If I click yes, I'll only save the selected sheets. If I click no, I'll save all sheets. And of course, if I hit cancel, I'll abort the operation. Now, one of the things we could do in VBA is create a much more sophisticated dialog box where the buttons actually say things like all sheets, selected sheets. But I'm trying to keep the code simple, so we're just using the built-in VBA functionality. If I were to click cancel, the operation has been canceled, nothing happens. I'll go back and rerun the macro, choose my save location. Now, before I do this, here's a peek into that folder location. And as you can see, there's nothing here. I'm going to export every sheet in this file, so that means I'll click no. When finished, it returns a prompt saying all sheets have been saved as separate files. I'll click OK. And if we peek back into that folder location, we can see every single sheet in this file has been saved as a separate Excel file. I'm going to highlight those files and delete them. Now, what if we only wanted to save certain files? Like I don't want to save the main data file. I don't want to save the master report file, but I do want to save all of the individual user reports. So I'm going to select the first user report, scroll over and shift click the last user report. So we can see here that the only sheets that are selected are for the user reports. I'll go back up to macros, run this macro, select my save location, hit OK. Now again, just to refresh your memory, there's nothing in this folder. This time I'm going to select yes to only save the selected sheets. So I'll click yes. The operation is completed and it says all selected sheets have been saved as separate files. We'll click OK. And now looking into that folder, we see only the sheets for the user reports. Now, as I said, you can just take this code and copy paste it directly into the personal macro workbook, set up a launch button, and then just use it. But if you'd like to understand exactly what's happening behind the scenes, just in case you want to tweak it a bit, let's go through the code and just identify the major components. So here's the name of the macro, save worksheets to workbooks. Then we set up the various variables that we're going to use throughout the code. Some of these will hold worksheet names, some will hold string values or text, some will hold integers. This next piece of code is to suppress the screen flashing that occurs when the operations are executed. This can be a bit distracting, so the screen updating set to false suppresses that. Now the display alert set to false will suppress the overwrite message that might pop up if the file already exists. So if those files exist and you run this, you will step right on top of them. Our next piece is what displays the browse dialog box. This allows the user to pick a save location. Now, right now, the only thing that it's doing is displaying the dialog box, but I did put some extra customization in here. If you wanted to set an initial start location, then you can uncomment this line of code and then customize the path within the double quotes. I'm going to comment that back out. You could also customize the title of the dialog box, and this is just the message that appears in the title bar. We'll go ahead and leave that customized. The next bit is to detect which button was pushed, either the OK button to capture the user's selection or the Cancel button. If they hit the Cancel button, this returns a zero, which then tells the if statement to display a message that says the operation has been canceled and then exit the subroutine. But otherwise, it means they must have pushed the other button, which is to go, and so we'll take whatever location is they selected, concatenate a backslash to that, and then store that in a variable called path. So this will be used later when we have the file name set. Let's scroll down. The next bit is to display a prompt that asks the user whether they wish to save all sheets as separate files or only the selected sheets. If they click the no button, this returns a seven and we capture that in a variable called save all. So if save all is a seven, which means they want to save every sheet in the workbook, then we execute this piece of code. So for every worksheet in the workbook, we're going to construct a file name, which is the constructed path from earlier concatenated to the name of the worksheet, concatenated to a .xlsx extension. We copy that into a new workbook, save that workbook according to the constructed file name from just a moment ago, and then close that workbook. This is why the suppressing of the screen flash is so important, because if you actually saw this activity happening, it will be a lot of jumping around on the screen, which can be distracting. Then we go to the next worksheet if it exists. If there are no other worksheets, we display a message box letting the user know that the operation is completed. Now, if they didn't click no, which captured that seven, they might have clicked yes, which captures a six. So clicking the yes button in that dialog box generates the number six, and we just check to see if that save all is a six. This means we're gonna loop through the selected sheets. So it's basically the same code. It's just this statement right here, instead of being the active workbook worksheets, it's the selected sheets. 
So we're doing the same file name generation, copy the sheet to a new file, save that file, close the file, move on to the next sheet if it exists. Once done, display a message that the operation is complete. If the user didn't click no to generate a seven and they didn't click yes to generate a six, that just means they must have clicked the cancel button. So the final else in this if just says, display a message box that says the operation has been canceled and exit the subroutine. Finally, we have to reactivate screen updating and standard message prompts. And then the subroutine ends. So you can use this code as is, or you can use it as a starting point for creating more sophisticated solutions. So let me know what your thoughts are on this little bit of code. If you perform this operation frequently, hopefully this will save you some time. Thank you for watching, and remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.